What I have here on the bench today is a WhatsApp Pro ES power meter. I believe this particular meter was made sometime back in 2007, and it was actually quite a nice piece of equipment. It was made by Electronic Educational Devices, and it's, this meter was released at roughly the same time as the P3 International's kilowatt power meter. I'm not sure if the company Electronic Educational Devices is still in business today, but you can still find this power meter on the second-hand market here and there. So this WhatsApp power meter was very popular back then and was used in universities for teaching electrical engineering subjects. This is because it has a rather simple serial communication interface and you can either use it as applied software or write code to gather data over time and do analysis. So it was quite useful. And as you can see here, we have the USB port to communicate to the computer. So specification-wise, it is uh, quite comparable to the uh, P3 International's uh, P4400. And uh, I printed out the spec here. So as you can see, it can handle, probably can't see very clearly, but uh, this one can handle up to 1800 watts of load and has an accuracy of uh, plus and minus 3%. It is interesting to point out that uh, the spec painstakingly pointed out that the accuracy was actually the percentage for the readings and not the percentage of the range. So presumably this meter offers higher accuracy than some of its competitors. Um, the specification for the P3 P4400 uh, on the other hand does not point out how the accuracy was measured but nevertheless the accuracy here listed was uh, around 2%. So either case these two meters would be very comparable in terms of the accuracy and the range. So what I'm most interested in is what's inside of this meter. For those who had seen what's inside the P4400, you will know that uh, it was based on a chip on board design. So there was pretty much nothing to see there. And since this WhatsApp power meter is significantly larger than the P4400, so I'm hopeful that we will find some more stuff inside. Also because it has a uh, USB connection, I am very eager to find out whether or not the uh, USB is uh, isolated because uh, the specification actually didn't say anything about that. And uh, because it could be potentially dangerous if you, let's say, use this meter to measure a computer's power consumption and at the same time you log the data onto the same computer. So if the data, if the USB is not isolated, it could potentially damage either a computer or the power meter or both. So which is very dangerous. So well, so let, now let's the only way to find out is uh, to open it up and uh, take a look. Actually, before I open it up, uh, I just want you to to take a look at uh, the measurement compared to this uh, P3 International's uh, P4400. As you never know if uh, I destroy something in the meantime when I open it up and then we won't, wouldn't be able to do that afterwards. So let's do that beforehand. So let me move this out of the way and uh, let's first plug in this uh, P3 4400. And also let's plug in this um, WhatsApp Pro. As you can see the uh, cable is rather uh, thick, which makes it very hard to to uh, plug this in because this side is actually quite light. So first thing, as you when you plug it in, is you will notice that uh, it you know takes a while to boot. I haven't read the whole uh, manual yet, but uh, presumably you have some option of uh, removing or deleting uh, entries at that time. So now it's measuring zero watts, which is uh, correct because we don't have anything connected yet and what I'm interested in let's see uh, the watts is okay so we're gonna compare the watts so the first thing is that you can see this one has one decimal place and the, the p3 one uh, does not so presumably we can have more resolution here so to measure the power right now I don't have anything more suitable at hand but I do have this uh, LED light on the other side of the room so I can plug that in 
And uh, this LED light uses a switching power supply. So you will see, my suspicion is that uh, the power factor is uh, pretty poor. So now, now let's first put, plug it into the uh, P3. Uh, let's just see the, oops, this side. And when it powers up, it consumes roughly 21 watts and uh, uh, has a power factor of 67%. Uh, so if you read the uh, the voltage amper, the VA reading, it would be uh, 32. Okay. So now let's do the same thing on this uh, WhatsApp power meter. Plug it in and it's a 20.921. So it's a very comparable to what we just measured on this uh, P3. And uh, let's see if we, I can, uh, oh, interesting thing is it's rising actually. So that's probably okay. But uh, interestingly, I, um, let's see if we ca I can find uh, how to do this. Okay, so it has a power factor of uh, 0 0.65. So it's a slightly lower than that reported by the P3, but uh, it's nevertheless in the same range. So just from the high level, uh, we can see that these two meters are roughly um, comparable in terms of a measurement and uh, speed and uh, the power ratings. So the one thing is that this one does, uh, the WhatsApp Pro does have one extra digit, so which is actually uh, give you a better resolution than the P3. Not sure if it is a better accuracy, but nevertheless better resolution. Okay, so now we're done with uh, the measurement. Actually, this uh, thing is 22.4 now. So let's, let, let me plug it back into it just to see if we have the same reading here. Oops, this thing is, uh, yeah, uh, 32. Okay, so 22. So, so probably that uh, LED is warming up, so it consumes a little more. So anyway, so these two are very comparable, and uh, now let me turn it off, and uh, we will uh, open this up and uh, take a look at what's inside. So the first thing you notice is that uh, we don't have any screws uh, that I can see. Probably these are behind the rubber feet, which I really don't like this kind of design, which means you have to remove these and later on you're going to be impossible to put them back. But before I actually take it apart, you can see that we do have this uh, deep slot here and uh, without even opening it, you can see that this slot is isolating the, uh, the portion below and uh, the portion above. So my take uh, my guess actually, because I haven't seen it yet, is that uh, there's some kind of high voltage part dealing with the mains voltage, which is a, a separate board on top here. And they use this slot to do some kind of uh, isolation in the event of uh, uh, arc over or some kind of uh, uh, catastrophic event. So that's just my guess. But uh, let's, uh, let's uh, start taking it off. And I'm gonna tr try to peel this off. Oh, well. And uh, wow, this is glued quite tight. Oh, okay, now we're, yep. So indeed, the screw is hidden back under the feet. Um, so we just uh, might need to uh, reapply the glue if we want to reuse the feet, but uh, that's not my concern. So let me just uh, remove these. So after that is removed, it probably will be, yep. So these are the self-tap screws. Okay, self-tap screws. Let's now loose them, put it right here. And luckily we only have four screws to work with, so it's not that difficult. By the way, I really don't like uh, these thick wires connected to devices. Uh, without a way to actually take them uh, off because you know it's quite clumsy when you are moving around this thing is much heavier than the actual unit but uh, anyway okay so remove this
now I'm removing the last screw and would anything fall out um, let's see okay, so bad. Uh, let's see which way we want it to well let's just save it this way I think it's ah okay so indeed as we which uh, which is a uh, you know kind of uh, what I suspected before this isolation slot really is to divide these two boards and on the upper hand here you have the US uh, not the USB you have the uh, the board interfacing the mains and at the bottom here you have the board that is handling electronics so let's uh, see if we can remove this one this board up here it has two more screws and um, interestingly here you can see this uh, this mains cable it actually does not have a proper strain relief it has this kind of a metal ring to prevent it from sliding out um, because of this is very thick so I'm assuming that actually it doesn't really matter I mean this one you really cannot bend on this uh, uh, connection here but uh, nevertheless it is uh, really interesting to see that um, anyway let's keep removing the other one and uh, no still cannot uh, oh wait a second so it appears I'm not sure if you can see that uh, Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it appears that the, the socket actually was inserted um, into this slot and then this board is placed on top and soldered onto the, uh, the pins. So I actually won't be able to remove this board without having to desolder all these pins. And uh, let's see how far we get. Uh, let's not uh, do this yet. Let's see how far we get. Because I can see that it doesn't have that many uh, pieces uh, down here. It has a couple of chips which we can probably still read. And uh, so I'm tempted to not uh, remove this right now. So let's just see what is uh, behind this board here. And we have this rubber uh, piece. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, that's for the USB. Okay, so now we actually can see the actual board. Uh, let me zoom it in and uh, we'll take a deeper look. Yeah, I wish the, uh, the, the cable is not here because now it just uh, interferes with how I can't even put this down without uh, it tilting around. So anyway, so let me uh, put the camera in a better angle and we'll take a look. So on this main board, now you can see, um, I try to zoom it in so you can see better, but we have uh, the cables coming from the upper board. So uh, we'll take a look at the upper board later. But this one is a Revision 5 Watts Up and uh, the Pro digital board. So, and we have this uh, nice LCD here. And uh, here we have this main chip. Um, I'm not sure if you can read from that angle, but this is a uh, PIC 18F45J10. So I think, uh, I could be wrong, but I used this uh, chip before. I think it is, has a 32K onboard flash. So it is pretty uh, beefy uh, chip. So th presumably this one does all the, uh, the processing and uh, to drive the display and uh, the, the user interface. And as you can see, all these wiring going to the, uh, the display pins. And this one also has uh, quite a few uh, ADC and uh, the built-in uh, stuff here. I'm not sure if it's all used, but nevertheless, that's the uh, main processor it uses. And uh, coming down here, we have this uh, four chips, and uh, these are actually the 24C512N. These are 64K bytes each. So four of these would be 256K bytes, um, two megabits for you to store the data uh, after the, uh, for data logging rather. 
and uh, let's see what else. Okay, so here we have two text, uh, tactile switches for, for you to select different uh, stuff. And, uh, ah, so as we uh, mentioned earlier, you can see this uh, reading here. It says ISO. Um, this is actually an isolator. And the part number is 1201ARZ. So this is actually analog devices, uh, a dual channel uh, USB, uh, sorry, dual channel a digital isolator. So indeed, we have an isolated USB here. So the two channels are for the RX and TX from the, uh, the microcontroller. Um, I'm not sure why the specification didn't advertise this because this chip is by no means cheap and the properly isolated USB uh, is usually only seen on higher end devices and uh, so by including this uh, you know they sh certainly if I were them I would have advertised it saying hey I have fully isolated USB uh, port but uh, nevertheless it's not done in the, uh, the, the spec and uh, this chip right here is a uh, it's our actually we we know this chip very well. It's a uh, RT uh, sorry FTDI is a FT two thirty two R RL, so which is driving the USB to serial uh, conversion. So basically, that's actually all is on this main board here. Now, interestingly, um, I did not see any specific uh, chips here that can handle the. Um, uh, the power meter functionality and uh, I don't believe they they could have built everything inside this chip as you know even though this one has AD analog to digital conversion but it's not as accurate so I don't think that's handled on this uh, microcontroller chip oh by the way so speaking of microcontroller now you can see this JTAG pins here so you can actually use this to reprogram or you know read out the data and whatever so the pins the headers are left here and let's see before I move on to the next uh, um, the next board let's take a look at what else we can see here so we can see it says oh here it says it's 2006 and it's IBI Sys LLC interestingly uh, I have to look at that. Look up that uh, IBI sys. Maybe that's the company that made the board. But this board was actually made in 2006. So that's all there is on this board here. And uh, I'm going to take a look at the. Uh, I'm going to try to look at the other board. But now it's a little bit difficult. So whoops, uh, things are falling out. Hopefully I can. Oh, those are just the uh, those are just the uh, the switches. So we can usually put them back. But uh, let me zoom out a little bit because uh, it's hard to see here. And let's see if I can find anything on the other board. So I'm not going to take this board out. Actually, I used a mirror that uh, uh, reflected the surface back and I can see there are actually two chips inside and besides that there really isn't anything there it's just a couple of uh, passes the capacitor dropper for supplying the uh, the voltage to the board and uh, so basically what we have is a chip right here so you can see right now you can see this 8 pin chip this is actually just a standard uh, 7005 regulator in this uh, SOIC packaging and so that provides the 5 volts to the board and uh, there's another chip hidden here uh, behind I think you can uh, maybe you can't see but it's right here that chip is actually an ADE7763 so that's our actually the, the core chip that's a single phase active and a parent energy meter IC so that chip actually handles all the heavy lifting from the mains measuring the uh, the power uh, and the current and everything else and so the main processor on the uh, the secondary board that we saw earlier is simply just to gather that information and display it onto the user interface so the heavy lifting is all done on this board so one thing that strikes me is that the parts used in this uh, energy meter is actually 
all prime parts and uh, for example the pick from the pick controller to the uh, the 256 uh, kilobits non-volatile memories and the FTDI uh, uh, RS232 converter chip and the of course the AD7763 uh, the energy metering chip and all these are actually quite expensive I mean expensive in terms of uh, the uh, bill of the material and so just by roughly calculating the uh, the parts you would easily add up to be thirty dollars for everything that is included inside this uh, power meter excluding your case and uh, cables and uh, you know all the mounting material this is actually quite expensive to make and so no wonder I, I assume that it probably will not be able to uh, compete anywhere close to this uh, single IC and uh, this chip on board design with, with this uh, kilowatt and uh, that's why the kilowatt is uh, very popular and you don't really see this uh, uh, watts up meter that often. Anyway, so now it's, it's time for me to put it back. Okay, so let's see if I can put the rubber feet back on. And yep, so they don't really stick anymore. But uh, we'll just uh, right now temporarily put them on, and later on I can apply glue to glue them back. And uh, so that's the problem of these kind of rubber feet. But anyway, see now it's just to come off right away after the first time you peel them off. Anyway, so let's see if it still works. And uh, let's. Uh, Plug this in. So it becomes on. Yep. It. Uh, comes on with no problem. So. Let's plug in my power again. Just to make sure that it works. So everything is uh, working correctly. So I, anyway, so I hope you find this uh, video interesting and uh, hope you learned something new. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and I will catch up with you next time.